Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Herp Monday number five and we have a good one. This Herp has a special place in my life and what I mean by that is this thing has given me the most painful bite of any animal I've ever been bitten by and I have been bit by quite a few things and it has actually left a permanent scar on my hand. The animal that we are talking about is the three-toed amphiuma. Um, we'll get another picture here. Three-toed amphiuma. Kind of snake-like, looking eel-like. But uh, three-toed amphiuma, amphiuma tridactylum. Tridactylum, three toes. Just so you know. Um, Amphiumidae is the family that this um, animal is a part of. There are three species of amphiuma in the world. They all live in the southeastern US. Um, they are very eel-like, but these are actually an aquatic salamander. They are fully aquatic. Um, that's a little misleading because I'm actually showing you a picture of it on land, but they are actually aquatic. As you can see, they primarily have a dark gray um, They'll even have black or brown. They do have a little bit of bicoloring to them. So they have a dark back with a lighter um, belly. And it's hard to tell in this picture, but you can see here it has three toes um, on very tiny legs. These are vestigial legs. These legs pose no benefit to the amphiuma at all. Um, but they do have the three toes. And the other amphiuma... Um, one of them has two toes and the other one has one toe. So that's the easiest way to tell it apart from any of the other amphiumas. Um, now we were talking about it. These things are a large salamander. They are very, very big as far as salamanders go. There was one recorded that was at 41 and a half inches long, which is about 106 centimeters. The average, though, is about 18 to 30 inches. Um, 46 to 76 centimeters is um, about your average length on these. So, you know, these are big. And they do they are a little bit slimy, Rom, but they are pretty big. And you can see multiple pictures here of them. Um, these live in very heavily vegetated um, bodies. Or they live in heavily vegetated areas of permanent slow water. So you're thinking swamps. That's where these things are going to be. You know, swamps, your bayous, um, even your permanent bar ditches, things like that. Um, these are actually fertilized internally. So the male will actually deposit spermatophores internally. And then the female will actually give live birth. Um, which is pretty rare in the salamander world. Um, these are nocturnal carnivores. Um, they're going to eat, you know, earthworms. Pretty much anything you get around their, hand, their mouth around. They eat earthworms. They eat fish. Um, but, and this is the reason why I mentioned what I did earlier. Their primary diet is actually crustaceans. Crawfish especially. And then they also eat mollusks, your freshwater mussels. So they're crunching these shells, shellfish. They've even been known to eat small turtles. So yeah, you can imagine the bite force from that. What had happened and how I got bite, when I was in college, all of the college kids that went to the same, that had the same degree plan that mine did, we had what was called a bite list. And what it was, was anyone who was brave enough to let an animal bite them, they would make, put that animal on their list. And, you know, it was a competition to see who could get the most and who could get the coolest. So I purposely got bit by things that I probably should not have. But at Caddo Lake, which is where I first saw this, I thought, hey, it's a salamander. It won't hurt that much. You know, yeah, I know they eat, you know, some stuff, but eh, they just eat crawdads. You can crack a crawdad. Well, so I was like, I'm going to make it bite me. So I purposely forced 
my hand around it until finally it bit down and the pain incredible it was absolutely agonizing it crunched a couple of the smaller bones in the hand just made a permanent scar it was by far the worst thing i have been bitten by bar none do not underestimate them they will smash your hand um now an interesting fact on these um as far as interesting facts there we go um even though they are living heavily vegetate in heavily in swamps and everything they will actually move across land during a heavy rain um as long as their skin stays wet they can go there but but they actually have lungs so they can survive out of the water they're using that wet rain to kind of keep their skin moist and they but they are obligate water or obligate air breathers so they do have actual lungs even though they even have a gill slit but what i thought was probably the most interesting factoid fun fact of the day for these things is the fact that these have the largest recorded red blood cells of any animal now to give you an example a human's red blood cell is about 6.2 to 8.2 micrometers by two to two and a half micrometers so you know you're thinking of red blood cell yeah we've seen them in school and we've seen pictures of them around. so 6.2 by 8.2 long and about two to two and a half micrometers wide so you're thinking ah that's micro how big can a red blood cell be so looking at it it is 70 by 40 micrometers that is the size of the red blood cell so it is about 10 times longer and about 20 times thicker than a human red blood cell you know how do you even compare that that would be as if you have a baby as a red blood cell and this thing has a small car as its red blood cell that that's the biggest thing i can that's the, the only thing that i can do it's it's insane the amount of difference um other than that not a lot going on there um these things are they're hide pretty well in their burrows um, most things don't eat them the only things that do eat them are like mud snakes things like that um, they're very slimy they are hard to get a hold of um, but really interesting salamander um, definitely one of the coolest things I've ever caught it doesn't seem like that but these are so you do you just don't see these but thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you do, I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to check out our other series, Fish Friday, which I hope you have been enjoying as much as I have. So once again, take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. 